that's a good place to stop because there are some of us that need to keep on following Jesus. I know you can't see, I know you don't understand, I know it don't make sense, but you need to keep on following him anyway. Bless you, beloved. This is Pastor Ray Berryhill here, and welcome to Resurrected Life TV. I'm so very thankful that you've joined us today, and we have an exciting word from the Lord. Now, at the end of the broadcast, don't forget to visit our website for the latest information about the exciting things that are happening here at Resurrected Life Church. Please feel free to contact us or to participate in any of our events because all of these activities have been created with you and your family in mind. We believe in reviving souls, restoring families, and renewing communities. So let's go into today's message. I want you to turn around and tell your neighbor, neighbor, do you believe God can meet your need? Because of your faith, it will happen. Amen. I want to speak to you just for a few moments from this thought. It's getting ready to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. Give the Lord a praise and be seated. Amen. In the context of our text this morning, Matthew records several miracles. I'm going to stop right here. Is anybody in need of a miracle? Matthew records several miracles. First, we see the miracle of Jairus' daughter. Jairus was a leader in the synagogue, and he came to worship Jesus because his 12-year-old daughter, his only daughter, was dying. So he pleaded with Jesus to come to his house and lay hands on her in hopes that she would be healed and live. And the good news is, while they were talking, Jesus went with him. Somebody say, Lord, go with me. Jesus went with them. And while they were on their way, a woman who had an issue of blood, she had been bleeding for 12 years. How many of you know that was a miracle? She had tried many physicians. She had spent all her money trying to get well, and instead of getting better, she got worse. But when she heard that Jesus was passing by, how many of you came this morning because you heard Jesus would be in the service? When she heard that Jesus was coming, she got behind Jesus, and she reached out, and she thought, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. How many of you know sometimes you don't need him to touch you, you just need to touch him? If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. And as soon as she touched him, the Bible says, immediately the bleeding stopped. And realizing that the power had gone out of him, that the virtue had gone from him, Jesus asked the question, who touched me? And the woman falling at her feet told Jesus what had happened. Huh. And Jesus said to her, daughter, your faith has made you whole. While Jesus, amen, your faith has made you whole. Now, while Jesus was speaking to her, someone came up and said, Jairus, don't trouble the master anymore. Your daughter is dead. But Jesus said to Jairus, don't be afraid, only believe, your daughter will be healed. Now, if I was sitting out there and you were standing up here, I would be shouting right now. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, in case you didn't hear it, don't be afraid. Of what's going on in your life? Only believe, 
only believe, your situation will be blessed. Are you hearing that? says, don't be afraid, only believe your daughter will be healed. And when Jesus arrived at the house, he saw all this commotion going on. He he heard all this going on. And so he put everybody out. And he said, the girl's not dead. She's only asleep. And the Bible says they laughed him to scorn. Amen. So how many of you know that when you make up in your mind that you're going to believe God, there are going to be folks that will laugh at you to make you think God's not going to move. Am I talking to anybody? But Jesus went in, he took the girl by the hand, told her to get up, and the little girl rose from the dead, which brings us to our text this morning. After Jesus left the girl's house, two blind men followed along behind him, shouting, Son of David, have mercy on us. They went right into the house where he was staying, and Jesus asked them, Again, do you believe I can make you see? Yes, Lord, they told him, we do. Then he touched their eyes and said, because of your faith, it will happen. Then their eyes were opened and they could see. I want you to get this. He says, do you believe I can make you see? They said, yes, Lord. So then he touched their eyes and said, Not because I touched you, but because of your faith, it will happen. Is anybody getting this? Too many of us are waiting on the pastor to touch us. Too many of us are following, waiting on somebody else to do something for us. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, because of your faith, it will happen. And notice, once they said that, then their eyes were open. Mm. And they could see. Not just their eyes were open, because their eyes could have been open and they still not been able to see. There's some folks sitting up in this room right now with open eyes, but you can't see. Then their eyes were open and they could see. Turn around and tell your neighbor, neighbor, it's getting ready to happen. There are four observations I want to give you from this text, and then I've got to move on. Number one, three different needs. Three different miracles, same God. Three different needs, three different miracles, same God. Beloved, when I look around this room, there are a myriad of needs. You have a need, you have a need, you have a need, you have a need. We all have a need. All of us need something different. I don't need what you need, you don't need what I need, but we all have a need. But the good news is, the same God is in the room. Three different needs, three different miracles. One needed resurrection. I got to stop right there. Somebody in here needs a resurrection because something has died in your life. And whatever has died, I'm here to tell you, God is able to resurrect it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For some of you, it's your dream. For some of you, it's your vision. Somebody, it's your joy. It's your peace. Somebody, it's a lost opportunity. For somebody, it's relationship. It's your marriage. Or it's your family. Or or it's your ministry. For some of you, it's integrity. Everybody has lost something. But the good news today is God is the God of the resurrection. And sometimes you find yourself questioning God why it had to happen. Why did this have to die in my life? Why did I have to lose my job? Why did I have to lose my hope? Why, 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 why? But sometimes God gets greater glory out of the death of a thing than he would if he saved it. Somebody is saying, why did I have to lose my home? Because God wanted you out of that house a long time ago. And he's got a better house for you. I wish you'd talk to me today. So there were different needs. One needed resurrection, but two needed healing. And there's some folks in the room right now. You came hurting. You came in need of a touch from God. And the good news is, God is a healer. And he's ready to heal you right now. 
turn to your neighbor and say, it's getting ready to happen. I declare and I decree before you walk out of here, God's going to touch your body. Second observation. In order for them to get their need met, they had to come to Jesus. Now the reason this is important is we spend too much time trying to get to other folks. When all you need is Jesus. They all had to come to Jesus. Number three, the key to their miracle was their faith. R.W. Schambach used to say, you don't have a problem. All you need is faith in God. I've come to tell you today, it doesn't matter what you think your problem is. Your faith is the key to your miracle. Am I talking to anybody this morning? So Jairus needed faith to wait for Jesus to touch his daughter. The woman needed faith to touch Jesus to be delivered from the issue of blood. The blind men needed faith to believe and follow Jesus, listen to me, when they couldn't see. That's a good place to stop because there are some of us that need to keep on following Jesus. I know you can't see. I know you don't understand. I know it don't make sense, but you need to keep on following him anyway. <laughs> Glory to God. Am I talking to anybody? And in each scenario, God honored their faith. Beloved, God will honor your faith. All he's looking for is faith. And when God sees faith, how many of you know faith will move the hand of God in your behalf? Jesus said to the blind man, and I want to say to you, because of your faith, it will happen. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, yeah. it's getting ready to happen. Yeah. Now come on and give God a great praise if you believe that. Come on, put a praise on it. It's getting ready to happen. Now, some of you would sit there and say, Pastor Ray, you don't know what's going on in my life. How do you know it's getting ready to happen? Because I know how God works. God didn't send you here today to dangle a carrot over your life. No, God brought you here today to give you a word that will change your life. So how do you know it's getting ready to happen? Because I understand how God works and I understand how the devil works. You gotta understand how God works. You have to understand how Satan works. So let's talk about God first. God is consistent. What do you mean? He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. In an ever-changing world, we serve a never-changing God. And the thing I need you to understand, I need y'all to get with me, not ahead of me, please. Even before I accepted Christ as Savior, this mighty good God was mighty good to me. Did you hear what I said? I said when I was a rank sinner, wasn't thinking about God, God was still good to me. Do I have a witness in the room? You can look back over your life and see the goodness of God. While you were in your sin, while you was doing your stuff, while you were in your mess, God was good anyhow. Do I have about five witnesses in this room? He didn't let you die in your sin. He didn't let you get caught in your sin. He didn't let you get murdered. He didn't let you get stabbed. He kept you anyhow. Why? Because he's a mighty good God. And that's not going to ever change. And what we need to understand is if God was good to me when I wasn't serving him, how much better will he be to me now that I'm serving him? If he did all that before I trusted him as my savior, how much more will he do now that I know him, that I love him, now that I serve him? 
Hallelujah. God is consistent. He's good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And if you're going through something right now and you're not seeing the goodness of God, keep on going. It's not over yet. You're going to see the goodness of God in your situation. The second thing, God's plan for you is to trust him. That's his plan. You're like, Lord, why did this happen? Why did, why did this have to happen to me? Why have I suffered so much? Why have I gone through so much? Beloved, Job said, man born of a woman is of a few days. And they're full of trouble. In this life, you're going to have some trouble. But God's plan is for you to trust him in the trouble. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to trust him in the trouble. Hallelujah. You got to trust him in the trouble. And so let me just ask the question one more time. I'm going to be redundant. Has God been good to you in the past? Well, if he blessed you before, he'll bless you again. If he healed you before, if he helped you before, he'll help you again. If God has ever done anything for you, if you've ever been down and he raised you up, if you've ever been out and he brought you in, if you've ever been sick, in trouble, without a job, without a home, without money, and God saw you through, then you ought to believe the same God will do it again. And he brought you all this way to teach you how to trust him. <laughs> Beloved, if all of our lives were simple, without a care, you never learn how to trust God. But there are things that, allow, that God allows to come into your life. He didn't bring them to destroy you. He brought them to teach you how to trust him. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. It's only in trouble that you find out he's your strength. Am I talking to anybody? Think about David. When facing Goliath, here everybody was against him. His brother said he had no business on the battlefield. King Saul said he wasn't able to go against Goliath. As a matter of fact, Saul said, I'm not going against him, but if you go, you take my armor. David refused his armor. I guess he said, if it didn't work for you, it probably won't work for me. But nevertheless, with his brothers talking against him, with his king talking against him, David trusted the Lord. <laughs> Beloved, sometimes you got to forget about what everybody else is saying and just trust the Lord. I have anybody in the room to trust the Lord. Now, I love what David says. David says, I killed the lion and I killed the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. Listen to this. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. What he's saying was the same God who delivered me before is going to deliver me again. I know you're hurt. I know you're disappointed. I know things didn't work out like you thought. But God only allowed the disappointment to teach you how to trust God anyway. Now let me help you. The stuff that has happened in your life wasn't a surprise to God. You might be shocked, but God wasn't. Mm -mm. As a matter of fact, it came by God's permission. Y'all don't like that part. Like, Lord, you, you, you let the devil jump on me like that? It came by God's permission. Again, not to defeat you, but to teach you 
to trust in the Lord. Beloved, you're not out here by yourself. But everything you're going through is to teach you how to trust the Lord. I like what Job said. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Habakkuk said, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall the fruit uh, uh, be in the vines, the field shall yield no meat, and there be no herds in the stall, even though all this stuff is going on, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Beloved, you got to learn how to praise God when it doesn't feel good. You got to learn how to praise God when it doesn't look good. You got to learn how to praise God when it seems like you're doing down for the last time. And this is what Habakkuk says, even though everything I'm looking at doesn't look good, yet I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. Why am I rejoicing in the Lord? Because I trust in the Lord. And so the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. See, God wants you to know, let me help you today. And it's something I've come to learn over time. If God allowed it, he's got a purpose and he's got a plan. Nothing that you're going through came by happenstance. Amen. Nothing you're going through happened just because, just because. No, God allowed it to happen. And if you will only trust him in it, if you'll only trust him through it, God is about to perform a miracle in your life. But without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. Anybody want to please God? Then you got to believe God where you are. Without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. You got to believe that God is in it. And you got to believe that you're going to come out of it better than you went in it. Can I get a good amen? amen? Amen. And so there's some things I understand. I understand how God works. I understand that, that God is consistent. I understand that God's plan in every situation, in every dilemma, in every adversity is for me to trust him. And then I know that Satan's plan is to destroy me. God's plan is to bless me. Satan's plan is to destroy me. How does he destroy me? By destroying my faith. Am I talking to anybody yet? 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. Be sober. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going from King James, which I memorized. <laughs> Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him standing firm what? In the faith. Amen. Beloved, too many of us come out of faith when we need to stand in faith. If you really want to see God work it out, you got to stand in faith. Turn around and tell three people, stand in faith. Stand in faith. Listen, the reason the enemy is attacking you is because God is already moving in your life. And because God is moving, Satan attacks you to destroy your faith. He wants you to stop believing God. He wants you to stop trusting God. He wants you to continue to look at what you see. As if what you see is all there is. So he attacks you and he brings guilt to remind you of your failures. So he brings doubt to remind you of all your insecurities. He brings hopelessness to make you want to give up. He brings pressure on your life to tempt you to believe that you are all alone and God won't be there for you. But when he launches you, launches this attack against you, the only way for you to counter him is through your faith. If he's going to come after you, give him your faith. 
See, in the midst of whatever it is you're going through, you need to just tell the Lord, I still believe God. My children are acting up, but I still believe God. They're acting up on my job, but I still believe God. Whatever it is that's going on in your life, I dare about 10 people to say, I still believe God. It may not have worked out like I wanted. It may have been unexpected, but I still believe God. Huh. That's how you counter them. You got to counter them with your faith. If you faint in the day of adversity, your faith is small. So, beloved, the more that happens, the more faith you've got to have. So, I hear the word of God say, be strong in the Lord. Don't be strong in yourself. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may resist the wiles of the devil. He tells you to put on the helmet of salvation, put on the, the breastplate of righteousness, have the sword of the spirit, have your feet shod with the preparation of gospel of peace, have the shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Beloved, you gotta, you gotta dress up. You gotta dress up. Amen. Put on the armor of God. Are you getting this? Because when the enemy sees you and the armor of God, he doesn't know whether it's you or God. Oh yeah, you just got that. Amen. You ever seen somebody wear a certain coat or a certain jacket and you look and you say, there goes so-and-so. But it's somebody else who has it on. And it wasn't until you really got up on them that you recognized that it wasn't them. Beloved, when the devil sees the armor of God on you, he'll leave you alone. Hallelujah, because he thinks it's God. And it is God in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah, let me move on. Let me move on. Faith, 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 faith. Listen, the just shall live by faith. We are people of faith. We speak faith. Through faith, we establish, we release, we receive, we release, and we sustain the blessings of God on our lives. Too many of us are speaking doubt. Too many of us are speaking defeat. But in order for you to overcome, you got to speak faith. Let faith come out of your mouth. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Amen. In other words, while you're speaking, God is moving. If you're not saying anything, then he can't move in your behalf. You counter the enemy with your faith. Now, let me be very real with you. Sometimes we look at ourselves and all we see is sin and failure, mistakes. The Lord, I want to thank you for visiting Resurrected Life Church family. We're so very glad that you joined us today to hear an encouraging word from the Lord. And I want you to know that anytime you're in the Chicagoland area, please feel free to stop in and worship with us. We would love to have you. The address and information is on the screen. Until then, this is Dr. Ray Allen Berryhill letting you know here at Resurrected Life Church, we're resurrecting lives and changing the world. Until next time. If you would like a copy of today's broadcast, please contact 773-286-0767 or go online at evangelchicago.org. Resurrected Life Church International would like to invite you out to our church services located at 4538 West Fullerton, Chicago, Illinois. Sunday services are held 8 and 10 a.m. for our English-speaking community and 1.30 p.m. for our Spanish-speaking community. And on Wednesday at 7 p.m. We look forward to seeing you there. Learn more about our church and church family at evangelchicago.org today. Resurrected Life Church International. Reviving faith, reviving souls, restoring families, renewing communities, resurrecting lives, changing the world.